for people that are you we could say say call it mid career ish you know or just you know not a newbie right. anymore but you're an intermediate to advanced adjuster right. And, you know, maybe you've got your mind right about this and you're not like, you know, throwing a big attitude about fee schedules or whatever. Same basics, I think, apply, right? So, you, you know, you, you, you standardize your workflows and then you optimize, right? And you, and you, you do that with everything. You do that with your networking. You do that with your, you know, your, tr your own personal training and your skills development and then how you interact with customers and everything else. And you, and you get better with the reps, you get better and better and better, right? If you're, if it's, if you're going from, you know, September to March without doing any work, you're not getting any reps either, right? You're not getting more practice and more skills under your belt. Um, so, but if, if you have been and you're like, you know, I think I got this, that part nailed down and I, you know, I go to the conferences or whatever, you really, you still want to level up, right? Um, you want to take things to the next level. The industry is, not just cat claims or daily claims, property claims or auto claims, right? There's so much more to this industry. If you're a, a good adjuster and it really, really clicks with you and you want to take things to the next level and you've done a lot of different kinds of claims, it may be time to maybe specialize a little bit, right? Maybe you want to um, do commercial, Right. And just you only do commercial, you know, occasionally picking up, you know, when, when the need is there and they're desperate and they need you go do residential or whatever, but transition over into commercial. What certifications do you have to get for that? A lot of carriers um, have a special commercial farm ranch certification that you have to get before they'll let you touch any other commercial losses. Right. So get that right. Maybe you need to pick up a w, your WTR, WRT from IICRC, which is, you know, a water restoration technician. You're not going to do the, the restoration, the, you know, the restoration stuff, but you're going to know what to do. Right. So that you're able to communicate with people. A lot of big losses, but most big losses, all big losses. I'm just going to say it. All big losses are either water or fire, right? Almost all, right? Well, the truth is, wind. water does more damage on a fire claim than what the fire actually does most of the time. Yeah. Then the fire department comes in and soaks everything in water. So whatever was undamaged is now damaged. Yep. So water, restoration, learn learn more about fire. You're not going to do a lot of cat, uh, fire on cat. Um, as a rule, unless you unless you get like you live in Washington or California or Montana and it's wildfire season, you know, and there's fires all the time and there's enough fires where they're hitting like big neighborhoods and stuff. Mostly going to be wind and hail water claims. But learn about fire, right? Um, find training for f doing fire losses or, or find a, 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 a forensic engineering firm. Um, or a fire investigator, somebody that could mentor you and just you, you just shadow them and have them help you understand the the, the nuts and bolts of fire losses, you know, without getting experience. There's, there's lots of ways to do this, right? So then you got that on your resume. And then you go to NACA and you sit down with a firm, you know, with with firms that are that do more commercial large loss stuff like Proventure or um RAC adjust. I don't think I've ever seen them at NACA, but the, the, the companies that that don't really do any much or any residential stuff, they they do only commercial, right? Hook up with those guys. You know, you also you're in a position now, especially if you've, you've been doing this for four or more years, to start doing flood, right? Flood. And even if you haven't got, you know, four years, you can still do private flood, right? Which is something that's starting to be a, th a thing, which has got doesn't have the restrictions that the, the NFIP does because the NFIP is done by the government. Pri private flood is done by the insurance companies and they can write whatever policy they want for that. And I don't, I mean, you have to have experience to do some like large law stuff, but you're not going to have to have four years of experience and in in like a flood control number and a card and all right. this kind of stuff. You know, you just need to go and They'll have the, all the I firms that do this stuff are going to have trainings for, it and they're going to have orientations and all that kind of stuff. Colonial does a lot of flood. I think they do only do flood. Advanced adjusting does flood. Pilot does a lot of flood. Crawford does a lot of flood. Um, hook up with these companies and see what you can do to to get to the next level to do those large losses because large loss commercial is James. Nice. Tell us about tell us about large loss commercial. Large loss commercial. So there's. The majority of those are going to be T&E, first off. And 
And so yeah. you're, and the reason being is because you spend so much time on them. Um, do you, you that's set up a lot so of things? Little, little sidebar. So, yeah. So time and expense is basically you just like you make a phone call and it takes you 15 minutes. That's a quarter of an hour, right? So you get an hourly rate for whatever yep. it is. And then you add all that stuff up on invoices and then you send it in and you get paid on that, right? Versus right. fee schedule, which is where they say, all right, from the, if the claim is zero to five thousand dollars, you, the adjuster, get two hundred fifty bucks. If it's five thousand to ten thousand, you get two hundred fifty plus or three hundred five hundred dollars or whatever it is, right? And then if they have um, interior damage, then you can do an add-on of forty dollars or twenty dollars or whatever it is. And so that's the fee schedule. It's a schedule that shows the fees, and whatever the claim turns out to be is what is, dictates what your pay is. So that's the difference. All right. Back to you. No, so so those can so there's two types. You know, they can be T and E or they can be off a fee schedule, but just about all of them at some point, once they get to a certain dollar amount, will flip over to T and E. Um, and some people say, well, you don't really get to make as much money, and that's the reason why they're doing it that way because uh, they know that you're not going to spend that much time on the the actual claim. Well, actually, you do, and and. People don't realize that everything that you do can be built. Uh, your drive time can be built. Your yeah. your photo labeling can be built. You know, somebody goes, "Well, I'm taking 20 minutes to label photos. I'm going to put 20. I'm going to put 20 minutes down to label my photos." But you know, it, there's acceptable there's acceptable times for different things. There are some companies that will allow you one minute, and some companies even two minutes per photo to label and upload your photos. Yeah. Well, three hundred we minutes. We all know it. it does. Yeah, I think it's you know, twenty minutes. Twenty minutes to label photos is a hail claim. That's a that's a little claim, like a regular old right residential. But you know, when you've got these claims that you're running, you know, you're, you're going to have a minimum of a hundred photos, you know, yeah, um, on these things, and then the, all the time you spend, then you talk to engineers or you're arranging for engineers. And I've had, I've had one where I had to have it was a church claim, and for me to to be able to do the inspection, I had to have a cherry picker delivered to the site. I called it rental company. They delivered it, okay? Um, I used it to inspect the roof with, you yeah. know, and I did everything from that. And, and so all and that time, listen, all that stuff, and it took you, you that. it took you 45 minutes to scope the roof, but you waited an hour right. and 15, two, two, and a, two and a half hours because the guy was late. Late, right. You bill you every bill for bill that. that. And, and I've site, had claims three that, hours. you know, the claim was, for the size of the claim, it wasn't that big. Okay, um, the dollar amount wasn't that high, and on a fee schedule, on the average fee schedule, I might have made five fifty, six hundred bucks off of it. But because I got to teeny bill everything, and by the time it was done, I had almost twenty hours into it. You know, um, the thing built out over two grand, and then my cut was my percentage. I made more off the teeny than I would have made off the fee schedule. Yeah. You know. Uh, and so, and sometimes it doesn't always work that way, but the majority of the time it does. And so I'm not, I, I, me, I'm lazy. I don't like to keep track of my time and document stuff like that. So I, I really do prefer fee schedules over, over T&E yeah. because that's just one more step I have to do, but just bake it in there. I mean, it's, there's, and again, there's, there's things that, uh, like when you write your report, you know, they, the, there's, there's a standard for some companies that it's a, it's an hour per page. Okay. Wow. So when you're writing up your GLR and your GLR comes out to five pages, well, you know, it's five hours. You just got the bill. You know, some companies are 30 minutes, some companies an hour. You know, um, every company will tell you, hey, this is kind of what our standard is. Um, you just ask them and they'll let you know. But it comes out pretty good. I love that. And then large loss, man. I mean, we're talking about, you know, just large losses in general. You know, you can get what can really help you. And I'm, I haven't finished yet. I've started doing some of the, the classes and online classes, but getting IIRC certified um, and see how the mitigation companies would come in and what they would do uh, in these scenarios. When you learn how it's mitigated and how they do it, then that's going to make you a lot more efficient when it comes back to putting it back together and writing for it. Okay. So now you can walk into something that maybe has not been mitigated yet, but you already know what's going to happen. And I've been in a process. It's been a long process. I'm drug it out way longer than I need to. But the knowledge I've gained from studying for it so far has helped me get a little bit further in the game, especially whenever I'm getting these large losses that I've been getting this past year. And um, 
man, I wish I could find a way just to become a large loss adjuster and just do like one, two claims a month and be happy. But uh, <laughs> they're, yeah. they're so. Well, that's the benefit, right? So that's, so that's, so for people who are like, well, I mean, I guess, you know, at a certain level, I can kind of understand, you know, why it would be better. But from a, from a sort of a practical level, commercial, um, the claims, they're not always bigger, but they're a lot of the times they're they're necessarily going to be bigger because it's a bigger building. The materials are more heavy duty. It's mm -hmm. commercial metal or whatever it is, like steel more buildings and stuff like that. Everything more expensive, expensive, right? So a similar estimate is going to be higher anyway. And um, you might get multiple buildings, like an industrial like office park that's owned by one company that leases it out to a bunch of different, and they got hail, right? Or an apartment complex, right? My favorite thing in the world. Apartment complexes, there can be 25 buildings and they're all owned by the same company and you talk to one person, right? You're not talking to 25 people, you know, for, for each one of those buildings. You're talking to one like property manager or the owner or somebody, you know, or their general contractor, whoever it is, you know, you're just, you got one point of contact, one phone call, right? So it's, it's almost, in some ways, it's almost less work to, to, mm -hmm. to make more money. Um, right. And it's not... And, and and I think that when you get to, to in my experience with commercial, when you're when you're doing like big claims like that, you're not generally speaking, you're not dealing with the storm chaser guys, right. the, the the canvassers. You're dealing with a local general contractor, a local like you know roofer that doesn't. He's like I'm a, I don't mess around with that hail stuff. I just you know. I do commercial, we do TPO, we do flat roof systems, we do this metal, whatever it is, right? And you're dealing with that guy. And that guy is, you know, you can sit down with him with his estimate and put your heads together and, and, and you know, you can you can work with that guy to put together an estimate that makes sense for, for everybody, right? So you, so you can have a little bit less of like, you know, battling it out with over bird poop on roofs and this roof right. has got to go. Um, you know, let's talk about what the going rate is for a TPO, right? Right. And then you just figure it out. And it may be a one line item thing. If you're a brand new adjuster working for a major IA firm, you will most likely already be covered under a blanket errors and emissions policy. You probably already pay something like five or $10 per claim for this coverage. And what is errors and emissions? Well, if you're accused of messing something up on a claim, your E and O insurance will step in and help you out. But what if you cause damage or injury on a field inspection? For example, your ladder falls down and smashes the insured's brand new Ford F-150 Lightning. Then a general liability policy will cover you in that instance. Again, you likely have a little bit of protection through your IA firm as a newbie adjuster. However, if you've got a year or two under your belt and you make most or all of your annual income from claims work, then you owe it to yourself to upgrade your e &O and general liability coverages to be customized to you. And depending on how many claims you run in a year, there's a very good chance these policies will be cheaper for you with your own coverages. Better and cheaper? Sign me up. There's only one company that provides e and and general liability solely to the insurance industry, and that is CPLIC, AKA Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And with more than 700 videos, there's plenty more to watch here on Adjuster TV. Don't know where to start? Just go to my videos page here on YouTube and type in a search term right here to find an answer to almost any question you have about property claims handling. And we'll see you in the next one.